my day. We need to talk about and figure out the energy stored in a charged capacitor. So we're going to start out, in theory, with two parallel plates, neither of which is charged. So we're going to start Q initial, if you will, is going to be equal to zero. We're going to take a single charge. We're going to move it from one plate to another. This first charge actually takes no work to transfer. Nice. So no work for first charge. Now, there is a potential difference between the two plates. So the next charge is going to take work. But now that we've moved another charge, the electric potential difference is greater, which means that it takes more work for the next charge, and so on and so forth. So what do we need to end up doing? Infinite number of We need to do an infinite number of charges. So we need to do an integral. Here we go. We start out with the basic idea that the work is going to be equal to charge times the electric potential difference. The work done is going to be equal to the change in, here, I'll do it in two steps. The work done is going to be equal to the change in electric potential energy. <laughs> which is equal to Q times the electric potential difference, as we've gone through before. But we're talking about moving an infinitesimally large number of infinitesimally small charged particles, so dW is equal to the electric potential difference times dQ, because each one that we're going to move is dQ. Well, the electric potential difference we know is equal to Q over C. So we can put Q over C for the electric potential difference, where Q, little q, illustrates one uh, of the charges being moved. So the work, if we integrate both sides, work is going to be equal to the integral from Q of Q over C with respect to Q. The limits of this, the initial charge on it is zero. The final charge on the capacitor is going to be capital Q. So we have the integral. Take the integral with respect to charge here is just Q squared over 2C from zero to big Q. Therefore, the work done in order to, to charge this charge capacitor is equal to big Q squared over 2C. And the work done is equal to the energy stored in the capacitor. So the energy stored in this capacitor is equal to Q squared, the charge on the capacitor, divided by 2C. We also have equations for capacitance, and, uh, which we can use at this point. So if we substitute in for capacitance, we get Q squared divided by 2 um, multiplied by Q divided by the electric potential difference. One of our Qs cancels out. We get 1 half times Q times the electric potential difference. We can also substitute in for the charge here, because we know charge is equal to capacitance times electric potential difference. We have 1 half times the capacitance times the electric potential difference, times the electric potential difference, or 1 half C times the electric potential difference squared. So we actually have three different equations for this energy stored on a capacitor. One is Q squared over 2C. One is one half Q times the electric potential difference, and the other one is one half times the capacitance times the electric potential difference squared. Please find them on your equation. What's missing? Q squared over two C. I don't know why. They give you two out of the three. I would give you one. They give you two. They should give you three if they're going to give you two, but I don't know why. So anyway, these are the three equations, and they're all related simply using the capacitance equation, but this is the energy stored on a charged capacitor. Again, where is the energy stored in this capacitor? This will just on the one plate. Uh, well, but that's not really like, it's not where energy is stored, it's not stored on the plate. What's set up when we have the, these two, char the two charged plates? Miller. Electric field. This energy is stored in the electric field. 
Because when you set up the two parallel plates, one positive, one negative, it creates an electric field between the two. I want to just throw a term on the board so that if it ever shows up on the AP test, you've seen it before. The symbol for it is, because we run out of symbols, I don't know why, is mu, and it is the energy per unit volume. And this is called the energy density. It has come up a couple of times, and they describe it each time, but energy density is just going to be the energy per unit volume. Again, I'm, I'm not going to do anything with it, but I just wanted to put it on the board so that you've seen the term before. So if it shows up on the AP test, you don't freak out and say, oh, you never showed us this. I said, yes, I did. Look, it's on the video. <laughs> All right. Dielectrics. Yes. Yeah, then we give you the equation. And, and, but every once in a while, they'll, they'll throw something that, like, this isn't actually a part of the <laughs> curriculum. But they like to throw things at you that aren't part of the curriculum. And when I identify them, I just try to give you, say, you know, this is something I've seen before. Um, 